voice of triumph. With the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is the great king. He is the great king. Over all the earth. Over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us. He shall subdue the people under us. And the nations under our feet. And the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob. The excellency of Jacob. Whom he loves. Whom he loves. Say la. God is going up with a shout. God is going up with a shout. The Lord with, with the sound of a trumpet. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Sing ye praises with understanding. I just read Psalms verses four. Psalms chapter 47 verses 1 through 7. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 I'd like to say good afternoon to all the sisters and brothers here at the house of Jacob. And uh, welcome if we are to be diligent. As, as always, it is an honor and a pleasure to keep the commandments before you before our God. First of all, I want to apologize for making it here late. It was an accident on 94. That's why we were delayed. Okay, however, we are here to be with the word of God today. The Lord says in his holy word to keep the Sabbath day. And on the Sabbath day, for you to have a holy gathering, and that is what we're gonna have. Sure. You know, you know, as always, on the whole, on the Sabbath day, we have some sort of topic dealing with the scriptures, because on the Sabbath day, you just come to hear the word of the God, the true and living God, to get your instructions, to show how, so you may hear how He wants you to live. And we're gonna deal with the topic today called a famine in the land. You know. Uh, the time going to come when uh, people going to search for the word of God and it just won't be here. You know, you think that time exists today. But today you can still have an opportunity to seek the true and living God. Because God always has his long suffering arm out to you telling you to come to him. But the time going to come when you ain't going to be able to do that. You know, so get the Lord while you can. Get the things you need to get salvation. That is what the word of God is all about. You being with him. You becoming one of his children and dwelling with him forevermore. That's why I serve the true and living God because I want to live forever. I want to behold his glory and I want to become one of the children of God when it's all said and done. You have, but you have all the tools now to become a child of God and that is this word. As long as you're in this word, you are a child of God. But you got to do this to the end. You can't uh, be straddling the fence. Once you commit to this word, you have to commit to it. You can't stop. Because much given is much required. Remember that. You know, I try to learn as much as I, I can. But I do understand the more I learn, the more is required of me. So without further ado, we're just going to go to the scriptures. We're going to deal with a famine in the land. And that is the title of this lesson. We're going to start this lesson off in Amos the 8th chapter. Amos the 8th chapter. Amos 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 8 and 1. 8 and 1. No, 8 and 11. I'm sorry. 8 and 11. Go ahead and read, brother. Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, uh -huh. that I will send a famine in the land. See, the Lord, he's going to send a famine in the land. And this famine going to be all over the world. Go ahead and read. Not a famine of bread. It ain't going to be about food. Not a famine of bread. Go ahead and read. Nor thirst for water. Not even thirst of water. What is going to be about, brother? But of hearing the words of the Lord. But of hearing the word of the Lord. That famine is coming. It's coming. Make no doubt about it. It is coming. 
Because like I said earlier, it's going to come a time when you're going to seek the word of God and it is not going to be here. Because you need this word of God. And we're going to show you what Moses said about this word. We're going to go back to the writings of Moses. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Because the Lord gave this word for a reason. And that reason still applies today. The Lord delivered Israel out from Egypt with a strong arm. And let these people know I am with you. Just do what I say. That is the only thing God always required his people to do. Just do what I say and it will be well with you. And it goes to this day. Just do what the Lord say and it will be well with you, man. Deuteronomy 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 8 and 1. When you get there, brother, you go ahead and read. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall be observed to do. He said, all these commandments I give you today, you observe and do. Go ahead and read. That ye may live and multiply. That you may live. See, you need this word to live. Make no doubt about it. And we talk about everlasting life now. You know, you know, you got plenty of people born, but are they truly going to live? You know, it's going to go beyond your death because just like life is temporary, so is death. We talking about living forever. Go ahead and read. And go in and possess the land which the Lord swam to your father. Uh -huh. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years uh -huh. in the wilderness. Go ahead and read. To humble thee. He did humble them in the wilderness. Why did he do it, though? Go ahead and read. And to prove thee, uh -huh. to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And it's the same apply today. He give us these commandments, and he humble us, and he going to prove you before your adversary Satan. He going to prove you to Satan. That's why he gave Satan a hand. Whatever Satan got to offer you, it ain't worth living forever. He going to prove you. Go ahead and read some more. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Uh -huh. And fed thee with manna, which thou know, knewest not. He gave you angel food. You didn't know nothing about that. The Lord had bread rain from heaven. Go ahead and read. Neither did thy fathers know uh -huh. that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. But man does not live by bread only. Go but, ahead and read. But by every word that proceeded out the mouth of the Lord doth man live. That is why it's going to be a famine in the land. So if a famine exists, that, that means man will not live. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of so people, a lot of people overlook the things that the Lord is saying. You could have all the, the food in the world in you. But that will not help you live forever. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. And when you live off these words, you're going to eventually live forever. You know, and a lot of brothers that deal with the old book kick against Jesus. But Jesus didn't come with any other different doctrine. He came in what the prophets wrote about. That's why in the, in the prophets also wrote about the master, Jesus. But they don't believe in Jesus. But Jesus came in the same, with the same doctrine all the prophets came with. Let's show you. Let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Jesus didn't come with no different message. Now, Jesus, when he got baptized, and the Spirit of the Lord came down on Jesus in the shape of a dove. And the Lord said, this is my son, I am well pleased. You understand? The glory of the Lord fell. But we know after baptism, that's when Satan started coming at you. Because you done cleaned yourself up of all your sin. That's why when brothers and sisters get baptized, I say, it's, it's, it's about ready to start now, man. As long as you wasn't baptized, Satan wasn't coming hard at you. But when you came up under that water, man, Satan going to attack you. And Jesus showed you. He was the example to us. Is that you know when baptism come in, let's see who's going to fall. 
Matthew 4 and 1. 4 and 1. When you get there, go ahead and read. Then was Jesus led up, up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But what, what, who led him? The spirit led him. The Lord going to prove you. The spirit going to lead you. And you're going to get tempted by Satan. Because God don't tempt. Satan one tempt. The Lord gave him a hand to put in front of your faith. He know what you like. He know what your desires are. And he's going to put it in on your faith. And the Lord going to prove you though. Go ahead and read. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. In the morning of his weakness. Because that's when Satan comes. Mm -hmm. When you're weak. Yeah. But your strength is in the Lord. Trust in him. Go ahead and read. He was afterward a hunger. Uh -huh. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And the Lord could have did it if he wanted. But watch what the master come with. The same way you have to come with. Go ahead and read. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out out of the mouth of God. So what did he attack Satan with? The word of God. That's when Satan come with you, come to you, telling you to do something contrary to the word of God. You come with the word of God. Somebody wants you to steal. The Lord say, thy shall not steal. You understand what I'm saying? You don't do no wrong. Whatever Satan come with, you fight him back with the word of God. And he'll leave you. Because the Lord don't prove you. You got to stick with the word. You know right from wrong. This word tells you what right and wrong. So when Satan come before you and dangle something wrong, before, it might be pleasing to your eyes. But you know you, you, you are serving of the true and living God. You fight him with the word of God. No matter what it is. If it's against the word of God, you say, thy shall not. That's what it's all about. The word is your strength, man. That's what it's all about. But you got to know this word. But in order to know it, you got to teach it. You got to learn. You just ain't going to pop up and say, I know the word of God. Somebody got to guide you through these scriptures. Every last teacher I know had to be taught first. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody got to be taught. Don't you, you? I used to read the Bible. But it didn't stop making sense to me until someone showed me how to line up everything. It's good to read, but to truly get some understanding, you have to have somebody to guide you through it. That's been the way it went, man, from the beginning. Even with the priests, they had to start off at a young age, and they had to learn because somebody had to teach them the ropes. Why you ask questions? That is what a minister is supposed to do, teach and guide you. But we're going to look at the wisest brother that was born from man and woman, what he said about it and what the preacher must do. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 9. Ecclesiastes 12 and 9. Go ahead and read. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, uh -huh. he still taught the people knowledge. You know, I don't care how wild the preacher is, he going to teach the people knowledge. He going to teach them knowledge. Go ahead and read. Yeah, he gave good heed. He gave good heed. And sought out and set in order many proverbs. Uh -huh. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. What word did he get these acceptable words from, Sam? And that which was written was upright. You know what he said? He, the preacher supposed to talk what is written. Like I tell everybody, my words ain't going to profit you nothing. Not unless I read it from these scriptures. That's what a lot of preachers go wrong, man. They want to interpret the word of God to their understanding. Whatever the Lord is telling you, all you got to do is line it up in Scripture. Because it's got to be what's written. I can't give you a piece of my mind. I'm flesh. I got to give you what's coming out the true and living God mind. He said, that which was written 
What's upright? Because you know what's upright. It's righteousness. Go ahead and read. Even words of truth. Even words of truth. Because we know the Bible is the word of truth, man. It makes sense. Everybody telling you the same story. Everybody. And it's leading you straight to who? The master. Jesus himself. Go ahead and read. The words of the wise are as gold. See, the words of the wise are like gold. You know what a gold is. It's something that guides you. That's what they use to guide the, you know, the, the farmers use to guide the cattle and everything. It guides you. Go ahead and read. And as nails fastened by the masters of assembly. And when you put it together, it's tight. Nothing wrong. It all is a fit. No breaking. It all makes sense. Go ahead and read. Which are given from one shepherd. Given from one shepherd. And we're going to find out who that shepherd is. Go ahead and read. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. He said, be admonished of making any books. In other words, he warned you. You understand? A formal reproof. He let you know books are out there. But you better be careful. You know, you got brothers out here want to read all these books but can't even get this one. He is warning you. He's admonishing you. He's warning you. He said of making a many books. Go ahead and read. Be admonished of making many books. There is no end. There are no end of books. This is the book you want right here. These are the words of life. You know, don't get me wrong. There's other books out there. But where did they get them from? Where did they come from? Everybody here is saying the, the same thing. And it's making perfect sense. Where did they get their resources from these books? See, other books, I don't get other books to prove the Bible. I let the Bible prove other books. If it don't line up with them, it's no good. You know, brothers are reading the Maccabees and all that stuff. You read that stuff, some of it don't even line up. So why am I going to teach you that? You know, the Bible talks about other books, but if it was needed, it would be here. You know, I read other resources, but at the end of the day, this is the anchor. I want you to know this. Because this has been tried, and you can't go no other way. Because when you come up with other books, you come up with other messages. And the majority of the time, the message is against the true and living God. You better think about what I'm saying. Go ahead and read some more. And much studying is the weirdness of the faith. No, they get to, you get to read all these books. You get, you're going to lose your mind. You really lose your mind. I can hear brothers talking about all the books. I say, man, what is wrong with you? What about the simplicity of Christ? You understand what I'm saying? Some things are simple. I'm not saying don't read other books. Don't get me wrong. But get this one right first. Once you get this one right, yeah, you can deal with other books because this is your main source right here. And if it don't line up with this, you just put it to the side. That's all. I read other books. And, you know, I take what is good and I leave what is bad alone. But I'm not going to teach you something that is bad. It's just that simple. Because we're going to hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Go ahead and read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh -huh. Fear God and keep his commandments. That is what it's all about. The brother asked me, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The master was cool. He said, why well, call me good? But if you want to have eternal life, keep the commandments. That is my main focus here. Keeping you the commandments. Because when you start keeping the commandments, the Lord start opening your understanding. Get these little things right. And then the Lord can give you understanding of the harder things. Get the basics right because it's all about getting eternal life. That's what it's all about. Get eternal life. That's what I want. What I want, I want and that's what I want you to want. Just keep the word of God. And you can't go wrong. Go ahead and read. For well, this is the whole duty of man. Uh -huh. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So if you do what's good, keeping the commandments of God, you don't have to worry about nothing. But you know when you go outside the commandments, it's considered evil. And that is what I try to teach, the commandments of God. 
Because I know if you come under the blood of Jesus and you keep those commandments, you in. Because the master himself told you that. You understand? But we want to see who is this shepherd. Because he said one shepherd, right? That's what, that's what the smartest man born a man and woman said. He said one shepherd. Let's see who that shepherd is. Let's go to our first Peter the fifth chapter. Just lining up things here, sisters and brothers. Because that famine is coming. You got all these crazy out here, civil leaders and everything. They ain't want to hear no word of God. I was in Texas yesterday. Uh, you know, they, they got the commandments written, which I think is good. You know what I mean? But then you got some politicians who don't want the commandments of God to be even be seen up. You understand? I understand the separation of state and, state and religion. But how can I tell, tell you that is a bad thing from putting the commandments up? I can't tell you don't do that. I'm not going to tell you it's wrong. I don't care what party you in. I got to go with righteousness the same way you got to judge. You got to judge the righteousness. Somebody said they want to show the commandments of God. I rejoice in it. Well, that's good. They might not be applying them right, but they got the opportunity to see what they're about. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's written and it's upright. Five and one. Go ahead and read. Go to now, ye rich man, uh -huh. weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Uh -huh. Your riches are corrupt. First Peter five and one. Yeah, that's Sorry about that, bro. <laughs> the elders which are among you, I exhort, uh -huh. whom I am also an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ. Because Peter was there. He's seen the suffering of Christ. Go ahead and read. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He understood that Jesus was going to come back in his glory, and he understood when it was going to be revealed. Go ahead and read. Feed the flock of God which is among you. That's the key. You got to feed the flock. A spiritual leader must feed the people. Go ahead and read. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint. You know, in constraint, like it's, like it's a problem. Like it's a problem for you. You got a problem giving the people what they need. Go ahead and read. But willingly. You do this thing willingly. When somebody want to hear the word of God from you, you give it to them. But you know, tomorrow, they don't want to hear that. They got to get paid. They want some money. Anything that they give you from the Lord, they want money. But he's going to tell you that's wrong. Go ahead and read. Not for filthy lucre. Not for filthy lucre. Go ahead and read. But of a ready mind. Always be ready to distribute this word. That's what it's all. I don't care what somebody asks me. You know, we go do things that uh, consist of the word. Marriage and uh, funeral. We don't do that for money. Anybody that give us mad money and everything, we give it right to the church. Every brother that done did that, as, my, as I know, I know that's what I do. That's what Brother Daniel do. That's what Frank do. We give money to the church. <laughs> we ain't for I want the Lord to give me mine at, this, at that day, man. Come on. All, like Nehemiah said, just remember me, Lord. Remember me. Go ahead and read some more. Neither is being lords over God's heritage. You know, some you got preachers over there that treat, treat their parishioners like they nobody. You know, they serve us. So go do this. Go do that. Delegate all the time and don't be do don't wouldn't move a finger. But that's not with us. That's why every event we go to, you see your pastor working, you see the elders working. We over certain committees. I'm over the feast committee. I know it's my job to get everything prepared. I have to do work. Because I don't mind. Because if everybody see me working on the feast, the feast committee ain't gonna have a problem either. Go ahead and read. But being in samples to the flock. You see that? You got to be an example. Whatever you are over in the work of the Lord, you have to set the example. And let the Lord exalt. Go ahead and read. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Who is that chief shepherd? That's the one shepherd. Jesus, man. We preach the doctrine of Christ. And Christ is from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, he is. 
That's what we preach. Of that one shepherd, that great shepherd, which is Christ. That's what it's about. He is the one. We don't come with no other doctrine. Go ahead and read some more. Likewise, he younger. That's good. You understand? Because Jesus, he came with something. Let's go to John the sixth chapter. Because Jesus, he is the true bread that came down from heaven. He is the one came. That is the bread you want. And if you want a part to eat some of this bread, you got to eat Jesus. And he's going to let you know what you got to eat. Let's go to John the sixth chapter. John the sixth chapter. John six. You know. Gonna pick it up at verse forty four. Because you just ain't gonna come to Jesus. It's something have to take place, you know. Sometimes you could be preaching this gospel to people and they won't receive it. And this is why. Go ahead, 6 and 44. Go ahead and read. No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me drawn. You understand? The Father have to intervene. You know how you be preaching the gospel to people and they just don't get it? Yeah. So I understand the Father just haven't drawn them yet. You can't come to the master except the father draw you. That's what happened with us. The father seen something in you, well, he, he, he or she truly want to serve me. Okay, well, let me tell you, take you to that one shepherd, that master shepherd. Jesus. Go ahead and read. And I will raise him up at the last day. Uh -huh. It is written in the prophet. You notice how I keep on saying it is written. <laughs> it is written. That's what it's all about. We have to give you what is written. Go ahead and read. And they shall be all taught of God. Uh -huh. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. That's why I got a problem with brothers that give you know the Old Testament. They say they deal with the Father. You ain't dealing with the Father. Because if you were dealing with the Father, you would come to Jesus. That's right. It's that simple. Jesus dealt with the prophets. You didn't have Matthew through Revelation in the days of old when Jesus was preaching. All you had was the prophets, the Holy Scriptures. Genesis through Malachi, that's your Holy Scriptures. That's all they had. But then they had the testimony. The disciples in them, they are the testimony. They confirm what the prophets wrote about. Go ahead and read some more. Not that any man have seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. When you believe on the Master, you got everlasting life. But how do you show that you believe in the Master? By doing what he say. It's that simple. And if you do what he say, believe me, you're going to get everlasting life. There's no, you can't get around that. Go ahead and read I am that bread of life. He said, you know, I'm the true bread of life. Go ahead and read. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness in our day. The one that ate that manna, they died. Go ahead and read. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. You eat, you eat, you eat this bread, you don't got to worry about dying. Go ahead and read. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. The master is letting you know, I'm the one. I'm that living bread that came down from me. I'm the true living bread. That manna was an example. But I'm that true living bread. Go ahead and read. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Uh -huh. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. See, that bread is his flesh. Jesus came and died for you so that you may live. And you ain't going to believe on he came and did it all for you. All you got to do is obey. You have to believe in him. Now, you had these other brothers thought they was talking about chomping on him. You know, stir fire. Eating on Jesus' body. No! He's going to tell you what you need to eat on. Skip on down to, uh, to verse 57 and read. As the living Father have sent me, 
and I live by the Father, so he that is me, even he shall live by me. You understand? Jesus led, lived by everything that came from the Father. And he's telling you and vice versa. Hey, so, so everything that I give you, you're going to live by me, and he's going to show you how to do it. Go ahead and read. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Talk about that bread and living forever. Go ahead and read. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is an hard saying. Who can hear it? They're scratching a the hole in their head. They said, man, this brother's talking about us eating on him, man. This is something. This is a hard thing to understand. But then the master's going to break it down for him. It's called the simplicity of Christ. Go ahead and read some more. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? Now that he's looking at the disciples, he said, man, y'all should know, but this offend you? Go ahead and read. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? Now he, he asked him a question. What if you see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? He dropped a little something on him because he allowed that. Because, you know, Jesus, he walked around with his disciples 40 days. And when they was on Mount, Lodden, out Mount Olive, he was taken away. And the man was, hey, hey, you men of Galilee, why are you gazing up in heaven where the Lord is taken away from you? This same Jesus who, who ascended up like that is going to come back in the same manner. He told them what he said, what you going to do? But when they seen that, they believed, though, you go back to Acts, the first chapter. Go ahead and read. It is the spirit that quickened it. You know, it's the spirit that give you life. It is the spirit that give us life. He going to let you know what he's talking about. Go ahead and read. The flesh profited nothing. This flesh ain't going to profit nothing. It's going uh, to decompose and everything else. Go ahead and read. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. You see that? Come right back to the word. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It is the word of God that you may live by. You're going to live forever. And this is the doctrine that the master came with. The same doctrine that was back in the day of the old. But we got to see where this word came from that the master gave. That's what it's all about. Let's see who gave it to him. Let's go to John the 12th chapter. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus said, I came and did what my father told me to do. The same thing you got to do. Because you're going to have to do just like the master. John 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 44. 12 and 44. Go ahead and read. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. You see what he said? When you believe on the master, you don't believe on him, but you believe on the one that sent him. Go ahead and read. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. And when you see me, you see the one that sent me. Go ahead and read. I am come a light into the world. You know, he came to bring you up out of this darkness. He came to give you this word. He came to give you this light. Because if you ain't walking in this light, you walking in darkness. Go ahead and read. That whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. See, when you believe in the master, you ain't abiding in darkness. Go ahead and read some more, brother. If any man hear my word uh -huh. and believe not, I judge him not. For I, am, for I am came not to judge the world, but to save the world. That's what Jesus came to do. To save us. To give us salvation. He don't want nobody to perish. He want all to come to repentance, man. That's what it's all about. Whatever you done done is wrong. You, you, if you come under that blood, you always got an opportunity to get back right with God. He don't want nobody to perish. And believe me, I use it. You know, hey, I break down on my knees every day. Ask the Lord have mercy on me for my sins, man. Just teach it, guide me the right way. And if I make a mistake along the way, then forgive me, Father. Show me my error so I can get it right. 
Go ahead and read some more. He that rejected me uh -huh. and receiveth not my words have one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last You're day. You're going to get judged in the last day. See, but if we come up right, judgment going to be given to you. If we do this thing right, you ain't going to be judged. Judgment going to be given to you. Yes, sir. And that's what I want. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. For I have not spoken of myself. He didn't speak of himself. Go ahead and read. But the Father which sent me, uh, he gave me a commandment, what I should say mm -hmm. and what I should speak. So what is the Lord giving him? you? He's giving you the same word that the Father gave him. And you know what you got to do? You have to be obedient just like the Master did. Yes, the Father, the word that the Father gave Jesus, Jesus gave him to you. And you have to do exactly what the Lord did. Be obedient all the way up to death. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And if you're so happy to make some mistakes along the way, you got to advocate Jesus Christ, the righteous, sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for your sin. That's a good deal. <laughs> good deal. <job. laughs> Go on and read that some more. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. You see that? And his commandments is life everlasting, man. Them things that the master tell you to do will help, will make you live forever as long as you apply it to your life. And you can do it. All you got to do is fix your mind to it. Sure, some things going to come up. You might drop the ball. Okay, so be it. Don't waddle in the mud. Get up, wipe yourself off, and continue on this journey. Because you're going to make mistakes. Can't nobody in here say they perfect. If we were perfect, Jesus didn't have to come and die for you. That's right. You see what happened to Job when he said he didn't have no help. <laughs> Lord dealt with him, didn't he? <laughs> Scared him half to death. He said, I heard about you. Now I know you. <laughs> Get on out of my face and go ahead and sacrifice for your three friends because I'm going to kill them too. You finished that verse 50? Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Everything that the Master said, he told you. So now we can be all on one accord. We all on this, dealing with the same word. Ain't nobody different. Everybody got to be on one accord, man. Everybody got to be walking in the same spirit. And what is that spirit? The word of God. What else this word is called on? Let's see what this word is called on. Let's go to John the 17th chapter. Now the master, he finished. He know he's about to die. And he's praying to the father now. And he's going to say some things here. And he's going to let you know what this word truly is. Seventeen and five. When you get there, go ahead and read. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. See, a lot of people think Jesus started with Mary. <laughs> no. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was, was God. All was the same in the beginning with God. Yeah. He was there in the beginning. Who could put a time limit on the beginning? You know, the beginning didn't start with man. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was just a part of God's creation. You understand what I'm saying? But he said, give me the glory I had before the world was. So he was there before the world was even in, in existence. God is everlasting. He's omnipotent. He was there. No beginning and no end. He's always been there. Go ahead and read some more. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Uh -huh. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. How do you belong to the Father? By doing the same thing the Master. Kept that word. You got to keep this word. Go ahead and read. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Uh -huh. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. He keep on telling you where these words came from. They came from the Father. Go ahead and read. And they have received them. Uh -huh. And have known surely that I came out from thee. 
and they have believed that thou didst send me. How do we know that the master came from the father? We read it. And you know where we read it from? From the prophets. And we believe that he is the one that the prophets wrote about. Go ahead and read some more. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine. You know, he said he prayed for the one that the Lord gave him. You got to be careful who you pray for. You can't pray for everybody. You know, sometimes the Lord might have a fix on a brother or a sister. They done crossed the line. All I pray for, Lord, hey, just show them your word, Lord. Can't go wrong, man. <laughs> you know, but man, pray for me. To, hold up, brother. You do well praying for yourself. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm going to pray to the Lord that he show you his word. Because when the Lord, the people cry, what did the Lord send? He sent his word to deliver them. That's what the Lord do. He sent that word to deliver his people. And when they take heed from that word, then he deliver. But if you ain't paying no attention to this word, then that man, you burn up. Because the Lord don't hear the voice of a sinner. So if you want to make sure your prayer is getting through, make sure you're walking in this word, man. And if you're in this word, you done drop the ball, repent, man. That's what the master can't even die for, man. To give you an opportunity to proceed with walking with this in this word, man. That's what it's all about. Ain't no big thing about this, man. The Lord is long-suffering. He loves us. He know we ain't nothing but dirt. You understand what I'm saying? Skip on down to uh, verse 14 and read. I have given them thy word, and the world have aided them. Now, when you get this word, don't think everybody's going to cuddle up to you. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, they're going to dislike you. Go ahead and read. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Because you ain't being a part of this world no more. It's called sanctification. When you start walking in this word, the Lord separates you from the world because the world won't do every and any and everything. You ain't going to do that. You consider. You understand that certain things is against God. I can't ride with that. You ain't of the world no more. Go ahead and read some more. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Don't think you're coming up out of this world. Go ahead and read. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Because when you're walking in the Lord's word, he put them hedges around you. Mm -hmm. He keep that evil from you. Go ahead and read. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Uh -huh. Sanctify them through thy truth. He says sanctify them through thy truth. What is this truth, brother? Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. And that is what he wants to separate you with. His truth, his word. You different from everybody else. Just look at your job. You, you walk a certain different way. You know, you don't think you're better than nobody. But the people will see a difference in you. Certain things you ain't going to ride with. You know, you, I walk around with people at work. We talk, we have fun, we joke and laugh. But certain things they do, I say, bro, I ain't got nothing to do with that, man. You understand what I'm saying? That word separates you from the world. We can talk some things. We have fun. I joke, you know. I ain't walking around like no stuck up guy. Oh, thank God. You got, you got the Jesus hollers at, at the job. Holler Jesus all the time and doing everything wrong under the sun. Jesus right. You understand what I'm saying? That truth, this word is truth. You understand? And when you got this word, you got to give it to the people. Let's see what the master told Peter. He was one of the twelve. Check out what he told him. Let's go to John, the 21st chapter. John, the 21st chapter. Now, Jesus done died and rose and everything. Now, he's going to leave some instructions for Peter. Like I said, the preacher got to teach the people. You can't hold back nothing. But we've seen the characteristics what a preacher must have. You can't hold back on this. Because if you love the master, you're going to do what he say. And this is some of the characteristics that the minister is going to have to have. John 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Go ahead and read. 
This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Now, this is number three. The third time he done showed himself to his disciples. And he's talking to Peter here. Now, go ahead and read. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said, Yeah, Lord, I love you. Now, what would the master tell him? Go ahead and read. He said unto him, Feed my lamb. He said, Feed the people, man. Feed my lamb. Go ahead and read again. He said to him again the second time, Simon. Just in case he didn't hear him, he's going to ask him a second time. Go ahead and read. Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord. Thou once, once again, he said, Yea, Lord, I love you. Go ahead and read. Thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He tried to put in his head, Hey, you are a disciple. You are one of my apostles. This is what you need to do. Feed my sheep. And that is what a spiritual leader going to do. He's going to feed the flock of the Lord. Go ahead and read. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said no, he to him. Love. He said, man, why he keeps telling me the same thing? i tell you why you, I'm going to tell you the same thing. You said you weren't going to deny me. And I told you you was going to deny me. You talking about you're going to die with me. Did that happen? You ran off. So I'm telling you a few more times. Go ahead and read again. The third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest You know what he said? Me. He said, Lord, you know us all things. You know that I love you. Because the Lord knows when you love him. You can sugarcoat things. You know, you can sugarcoat all you want to. The Lord knows if you truly love him. Because he's looking at your actions. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Like I said earlier, much given is much required, man. Go ahead and read. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Once again, he's telling them to feed the sheep. And that is what a religious leader going to do. Going to give you the words of God. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because... Peter. Now, Paul, he was apostle laid on down the line. And he was going over all over the Mediterranean. And he's in the fees now. And he's about to depart. Now, watch what he tells the people. Let's go to Acts, the 20th chapter. Acts, the 20th chapter. Now, Paul is about to depart because he's on his way to Jerusalem. He said, I don't know what's going to befall me. However, I got to go up. Because the Spirit told him to go up. Because they was always out for Paul. They wanted to kill that guy. You know? And they put some whipping on him. They tried to kill him. But the Lord delivered each time. And when the God is with you, who could be against you? You might suffer for the word of God. But remember, Paul did a lot of bad things. You know, he, he, he was on the church, man. He was binding people up, putting them in prison. Lord had to uh, come down and just tell him, hey, man, you know what you're doing? It's hard to kick against the prick, man. <laughs> Lord blinded him. And if Ananias, even when he told Ananias, Lord said, Ananias said, Lord, you, you want me to go put my hands on him? This, you heard about this, brother? <laughs> he a chosen, the Lord said, he's a chosen vessel for me, man. Don't worry about it. Just do what I say. And Ananias went and did what he was supposed to do. He followed the word of God. Now Paul is getting ready to go from Ephesus. And he's going to tell the people something here. Pick it up at uh, 20 and, and 15. And we, and we sailed Vince and came the next day over against Child. And the next day we arrived at Samo and tarried at Trigilium, and the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Now this is after the master them died. And after the Lord did away with his high days, why is he still keeping these things? 
You understand what I'm saying? Keep reading. And from my letters, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. Uh -huh. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons. You know, he, you, you've seen what I've done. And these are the things I did. Go ahead and read. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the line and the weight of the Jews. He is going through a lot. Mm -hmm. There was no end. He was running for his life all the time. Go ahead and read. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. He didn't hold back none of this word. He gave it all to him, man. Go ahead and read. But I have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Go ahead. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Is anybody, not only the Jews, the Gentiles too. This word is for anybody that want to serve the true and living God. You understand what I'm saying? Because some of our Israelite brothers and all think this word is just for them. They thought it in the days old. That's why they had to be taught. They had to be shown. Even Peter, he thought this was just for the Israel. But it's for everybody that love righteousness. Go ahead and read some more. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, uh -huh. not knowing the things that shall befall me there, uh -huh. save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide in me. Abide. The, spirit, the Spirit told him, this is what's going to happen to you. Jesus even told him, hey man, you gonna, you got to deal with a lot from what you've done. And he took the mantle and he just took off with it. He understood what he had to go through. Go ahead. But none of these things move me. Neither can I myself life dear unto myself. Uh -huh. So that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the he gospel care. of grace. He didn't care. Because on some occasions you just got to speak this word. I don't care how much people don't like you. Believe me, all of us have been in the situation. You ever been to the family reunion, everybody just walk away from you. Got to hit them with work. Believe me. But that don't stop you. That don't discourage you. Because you always had one cousin come over there who, who, who the biggest drink of them all. Yeah. He sold up and said, man, I, I did what you're saying. He said, I believe that. You read the book. The one cousin that, that nobody wanted to talk, he didn't want to say, man, teach me some more of that. He be the one, man. For some reason, all the one holy to now people, they, they walking away from him. Talking about you done lost your mind. You in a coat. Yeah. Come on, man. How am I in a coat? All I'm doing is preaching the word of God. How am I in a coat? Tell me what I'm saying wrong. Just tell me, please. Believe me, if you tell me what's right, I will do it. Show me what's right. Why I get back with you. No, come back now. Because I ain't going to see you until next year. And you ain't going to see me next year because I ain't coming to the family with you. Go ahead and read some more. To testify the gospel of the grace of God. Uh -huh. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. He said, you ain't going to see me no more. So, you ain't going to see me no more. Go ahead and read. <coughs> Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. I done gave you everything you need to get salvation. I, your blood is not going to fall on me. That's why we come up here and teach the truth. So your blood won't be on our hand. Go ahead and read. For I have not shined to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He ain't held nothing back. I done gave you all the counsel of God. And that is what we try to do as teachers in the church. Give you the things you need to get salvation. Because that's what it's all about. Go ahead and read some more. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Uh-huh. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseer. He's talking to the elders. Yeah, man, you better pay attention to the flock. You overseers of them now. Give them what they need. Go ahead and read. To feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Uh -huh. For I know this, that after my departure. He said, after I leave, this is what's going to happen. Go ahead and read. That after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Always have some brother that's coming out of nowhere 
coming with, with some kind of form of doctrine trying to take the flock away. Yes. That's why I don't care where you go, but wherever you go, make sure they're teaching you the word of God correctly. Right. Got no problem with you going other places. Hey, okay, fine. But as long I just want to make sure you're going to the right place to get the word to give you salvation. Because the church is not divided. If everybody, as long as everybody teaching the same doctrine, we good. But you got wolves out there that come and get the flock and put you subject under them. You know, because Israel always want to get something new. <laughs> always. I've been in Israel from, from the time I've been. Every time something new, they want to jump on it. What you got is good. Believe me, if it makes sense, hey, we're going to teach it. We're going to teach it, believe me. <laughs> And we try to teach you all the Bible. As long as you hang around, you're going to hear the word of God. Go ahead and read some more. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after you them. You know, perverse things. Things that's no good, that ain't right, the, the foul thing. That brother's saying some things that don't make no sense. I don't believe it. No, I've seen brothers that are sat in this truth and undealt with this truth. And then they come along a wind of doctrine, they just get torn away. And I just shake my head at them. I don't believe it. Because I, I, if, if I'd have known you was in the Word, I'd come and ask you some questions. Well, why are you, well, what's going on, man? Well, y'all don't teach this and y'all don't teach that. Well, show me in the book what we teach it, what, what we should teach it. Well, I ain't talking about the Bible. It's, it's other books, man. So you mean to tell me I need these other books to get salvation? What are you saying? No, man, I, you got to explore out there, man. What you looking for? You understand what I'm saying? You know, I, like I said, I, I believe in reading other books, but I want you to understand this book right here. Let's get this one down pat. Because if you get this one down pat, you ain't going to let them other books turn you away from this. Because I don't see the other books Turn you away from the word of God. Believe me. I've witnessed that. <laughs> so be careful, man. They rabbit in wolves, man. We're going to read some more about these wolves. You finished that? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. You know, because Israel, the Lord has given you everything you need. He given you everything you need. Everything to grow and walk in righteousness. And we give it to you, man. We try to do what the Lord say do. And teach you the commandments of God. Teach you prophecy. Teach you things that's going to benefit you to get you salvation. Because that's what it's all about. Getting salvation. That's what it's about. I want everybody in here to get eternal life. But in order for you to do that, I got to teach the right thing. It's a must. And it got to come from between these pages. But Israel had everything. But let's see what happened in them. Let's go to Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Because sometimes Israel will go to the left for no reason. Got everything they need. <coughs> and still go left. Because they ain't satisfied. Isaiah 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 5 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. He said, This is a beloved vineyard. Go ahead. So he really loved this vineyard. Go ahead and read. My well beloved have a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. Uh -huh. And he fisted and gathered out the stones there and planted it with the choicest vine. And built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. So, in other words, gave it all the right thing so it could grow. Grow upright. Go ahead and read. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, uh -huh. and it brought forth wild grapes. Uh -huh. He looked, it was supposed to bring up some good stuff, good grapes, something to be fed. Good grapes. But what did it bring up? Wild grapes. Go ahead and read. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, 
Judge, I pray you betwixt me and my vineyard. He said, Judge, between me and the vineyard. <laughs> Judge, I'm asking you. Go ahead and read. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? What I, I gave you everything you want. Yeah, okay. What more could I gave you? I gave you everything you know you needed to grow up to some good grape. Nourish you. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when I looked at it, it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And we're going to find out what, the, what these grapes are all about. Go ahead and read. And now go to. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. And be, you know, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do to this vineyard. <laughs> Since he's going to bring up wild grapes, go ahead and read. I will take away the heads there. In other words, you take the heads, there ain't going to be no more protection. Go ahead and read. And it shall be eaten up uh -huh. and break down the wall there. And it shall be trodden down. And be eaten up and trodden down. Go ahead and read. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dig. Now, if you don't dig and prune a vineyard, that means you're going to have thistles, thorns, and everything coming up that's going to kill the grapes. Go, go ahead and read. But there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. If it don't have rain, if it don't get that water, it's going to die. Go ahead and read. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Uh -huh. And the men of Judah is pleasant plant. They were supposed to be good grapes. What did they do, though, man? And he looked for judgment. He wanted judgment. What did he do? But behold, oppression. It just brought for oppression. Go ahead and read. For righteousness. He was looking for them grapes to bring up righteousness. Why? But behold, a cry. And all it did was a cry. It walked in unright. That was the wild grapes was doing. Doing everything against the true and living God. Who is this, this vineyard? Who is it? That's what we need to know. Skip on down to 13 and read. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. You know what? You know why they're going into captivity? Why they're trying down? Why they choked out? Because they walked away from the knowledge of God. That's when most people, most servants of God get in trouble. When they walk away from the knowledge of God. He has given you things to live, to walk upright before him. But now you want to act like you ain't got no knowledge. Go ahead and read. And their honorable men are famished. You know, your honorable men. Look at our honorable men nowadays. Look at all the so-called preachers and the politicians. <laughs> they are not walking in knowledge. Go ahead and read. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Uh-huh. They don't have the word of God. Therefore, hell have enlarged. You know, hell have enlarged. Go ahead and read. And open their mouths without measure. Uh-huh. And their glory and, and their multitude. And their glory and their multitude. Go ahead and read. And their pomp. You know, all their celebrations. Go ahead and read. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. Got a time going to come when Israel going to suffer. People better pay attention. <laughs> hey, man, Israel is about to go through something. Ain't nobody paying no attention. They lining everything up. Everything up. Yep, yep. And the only thing going to deliver you is the word of God. Tell him. Israel out there shaking it up and shaking down, having fun, ain't thinking about the Lord. And when this thing suddenly come on them, it's going to be watched all the time then. So, you understand what I'm saying? They're going to walk away. They're going to perish. That's what it's all about, man. Israel will not listen. They glutton for punishment. You know, because the Lord gave Israel all they want when he pulled them out as a nation. Let's go to Ezekiel and see what the Lord did for them. Man, gave Israel everything they want. When he delivered Israel from Egypt, man, he married them, man. Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel <coughs> 16. We're going to pick it up at 3. Go ahead and read. 
and say, Thus says the Lord God unto Jerusalem. Now he's talking to Israel. Jerusalem, go ahead and read. Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother an Hittite. Now these ain't Canaanites with the mother of Israel. No, these were the lands that the Lord gave Israel. Go ahead and read. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut. Uh -huh. Neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Go ahead. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. Uh -huh. And I pity thee. Nobody thee. pity you, Israel. When the Lord delivered you from Egypt, didn't nobody pity you. You were the home-born slave. Go ahead and read. To do any of these unto thee. To have compassion upon you. Nobody have no compassion on you. Go ahead and read. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. Did nobody care? When you became a nation, nobody cared about you. Nobody cared about you. When Jacob had them 12 sons and you became a nation of Israel, nobody cared about you. Egypt put you in the land of Goshen. You couldn't have been among their people because of who you were and the lifestyle you were. Because they lived in a so-called high status. You couldn't have beards. You couldn't be a farmer. They looked down on that. So they had separated you from the world. Because Egypt was running. The pharaohs were running. But then he delivered you. Skip on down to uh, eight and read. Now when I passed by thee, I looked upon thee. Behold, thy time was the time of love. Uh -huh. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, says the Lord God. And thou became When did mine. you become the Lord? When he, when he instituted that covenant with you. When Moses put that blood on the covenant, he said, the covenant of God. He became married unto you. You belong to him then. You belong to him then. It was etched in the blood of same blood you under now, but the blood of Jesus. Because you come into a covenant when you come under that blood, man. You are marrying the Lord. Go ahead and read. Then washed I thee with water. Uh-huh. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. Go ahead. I clothed thee also with broader work, and shod thee with badger skin. And I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. Uh -huh. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thy ears, and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Because when the Lord put us in the land, we had everything we wanted. Everything we needed, everything we were standing out. People feared us. Other nations feared us. When the Lord drew upon us out with a strong arm. To the point where they were disguising themselves so you could so you could be confederate with them. Hey, we'll be all slaves. Don't even worry about it. That's how rough we were. Go ahead and read. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and brought to work. Had all the sharp clothes. Israel was sharp, man, looking good. And what else were we doing? Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil. Eat the best of the land. We was up on top. Go ahead and read. And thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. You see that? We prospered everywhere we went, as long as we was keeping the word of God. Go ahead and read. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my kindness. Which I have put upon thee, said the Lord God. We were known throughout the land. Everybody knew about Israel. Everybody. Go ahead and read. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty, and playest the harlot because of thy renown, uh -huh. and pourest out thy fornications on everyone that passed by his it was. You understand? In other words, he stopped committing those spiritual fornications, started serving other gods. And that's when Israel got bad. You were serving the true and living God, but that wasn't good enough for you. You want to get like the other nations. Start doing what they do. Serving God to be no God. That's what got us in trouble. That's why we don't deal with certain things today dealing with other gods. We just don't mess with it. Because we see what happened to our forefathers. Yes. 
You understand what I'm saying? But it was the Levites who were supposed to teach the people. Let's see what happened to them. Malachi 24. 2. Malachi 2. No, I mean Malachi 2, and we're going to pick it up at 4. I'm sorry about that. Because it was the Levites. They were supposed to be the ones. Matter of fact, they were the ones supposed to give you the word of God. To show you what you should and shouldn't do. But let's see what happened to them. Malachi 2 and 4. 2 and 4. Go ahead and read, brother. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, said the Lord of hosts. Yeah, his covenant was with Levi. Go ahead and read. My covenant was with them of life and peace. Uh -huh. And I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. He was always afraid. That's why he did what he, what he was supposed to do. He was scared of God. Go ahead and read. The law of truth was in his mouth. So in other words, he had this word. That truth was in his mouth always. Go ahead and read. And iniquity was not found in his lips. Because if you read that word, you ain't going to be too quick to do wrong. Like I told a brother, I said, if you read your word, man, you ain't going to be. I ain't never seen a brother do wrong while he's reading the word of God. I've never seen it. It's just when we get outside this word, we drop the ball. Go ahead and read. He walked with me in peace and equity. Uh -huh. He did turn many away from iniquity. You see that? He turned many from their sins. How? By giving them the word of God. Go ahead and read. For the priest's lips should keep now. You see that? Mm -hmm. But then what the Lord said, my people have gone straight because of lack of knowledge. So they stopped getting that knowledge. Because the priest was not giving it to them. Go ahead and read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. But what happened? But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. See, when you don't give them that word, they stumble at the law. That's why it's the minister's job to teach the people what's right and what's wrong. Yes, sir. But make sure it's coming from where it is written. Go ahead and read. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, uh, said the Lord of hosts. Go ahead and read. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and based before all the people. You see, they say I made you contemptible. Go ahead and read. You, know, you done did something wrong. You are content now. Go ahead and read. According as ye have, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. You know, you done gave half truth. Because that's what they're going to give them tomorrow. Half truth. So you know who they ministers are. Satan came with half truth. You won't surely die. You know, they said once you eat of this tree, you don't know what's good and what's bad. Which they did understand. They knew they was naked. But they was going to die. That's how Satan come with half truth. He ain't going to give it all to you. Go ahead and read. Have we not all one father? Have not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our father? You profane the covenant of our father. They kept the commandments of God so that they may live. Go ahead and read. Judah have dealt treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. You know why? Because they walked away from the commandments of God. They were doing abominable things. They were dealing with God treacherously. In other words, walking against them. Serving other gods. Go ahead and read. But Judah have profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved and have married the daughter of a strange God. You see what they did? God, they don't went outside of God. They don't marry these strange gods. You was married to the Lord. What better husband could you hide? But you went with this fast God. When it looked good to you. But they end is death. Go look at this thing again. Let's go to Isaiah the 29th chapter. 29. Isaiah 29. Look at this thing some more. Because these ministers now, man, it look, you listen to some of the things they say, man, you... It ain't making sense. But this is what's wrong with them. Isaiah 29, 
And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Go ahead and read. Stay yourselves in wonder. Uh -huh. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. See, they drunk, but it ain't because they've been uh, burning their lips with, drunk, with wine. Go ahead and read. They stagger, but not with strong drink. They ain't been drinking cognac. What they been doing, man? For the Lord have poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and have closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. See, he covered your eyes because you have not walked in the word of God. You doing what you want to do. And because you do that, the Lord closed your eyes. That's why when a brother ain't speaking the truth and ain't, ain't dealing with the truth, when he trying to tell me something, I say, man, get away from me. So the Lord done gave you this great understanding, and you can't get the simplest things right by keeping the Sabbath day. Whatever you got, brother, I don't need it. And I know the Lord done closed your eyes. Go ahead and read. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Now this Bible is like a, a book that is sealed. Go ahead and read. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. You know, you go to the, the professors, the doctors. The great ministers. You tell them, read the simple stuff. What did the Lord mean by keep the Sabbath day holy? Go ahead and read. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. He said, I don't understand it's sealed. I understand about the seventh day. But you know, the Lord is telling you, you know, you got to righteously, you know, you got to have a spirit on you. You mean to tell me I can't count seven days? What's the first day of the week, man? Where's well, Sunday? What's the seventh day of the week? It's Saturday. The seventh day of the what? The Sabbath day of the Lord. So whenever Saturday begins, that's the Sabbath day. Can we agree on that? Well, I have to agree to disagree. <laughs> Go ahead and read some more. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. You know the one that woke up in the middle of the night and said, the Lord told me to be a preacher. Ain't read nobody. <laughs> Lord just told him to be a preacher. You know people say that. Man, I woke up this morning, the Lord told me to be a preacher. Well, what you going to say, man? He going to tell me. Well, you said he told you to be a preacher. Well, let's look at the characteristics of a preacher. The preacher taught what? Knowledge. Now, you tell me what knowledge you got if you ain't read the book. Much business is in dreams, man. If a man dream a dream, let him dream a dream. But if a man got my words, let him speak in faith. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and read some more. And he said, that I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouths and with their lips do honor me. You know, they're Jesus you to death. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Well, Jesus you to death. But where is the inside? Where is the heart? He don't let you know. Go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Because nine times out of ten, what you being going to be taught tomorrow is going to be taught by the precepts of men. God right. love everybody. But why you got a fire? <laughs> Every day of the Sabbath day. Read it to me. You can eat anything you want to eat. Show me that. Come on, man. Make it make sense. The precepts of men. And the master confirmed them with Because, you know, like I say, some people think Jesus came with a different doctrine. Jesus came with the same doctrine that was written in old. Let's go look at them. Let's go to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Oh, it didn't come with no different message, man. How be it? He's the author of the word. He the one told the prophets what to write. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 15 and 1. 15 and 1. Go ahead and read. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying... So now we got the spiritual leaders here. Go ahead and read. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Now they're talking about disciples breaking the commandments of the elders. You know what I mean? Go ahead and read. Well, they wash not their hands when they eat bread. You know, man, come on. Oh, if I don't wash my hands before I eat bread, I'm wrong. Come on, man. Where, where did that come in the law? Show me what that said. Go ahead and read. But he answered and said unto them, 
Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? And that is what I ask some of these, these preachers. It's traditional that we keep Sunday. Well, the commandments say keep the Sabbath day. Why are you breaking the commandment by your tradition? Go ahead and read. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father and mother, let him die the death. You know, and you got that nowadays. You got it so what parents have to live, live with their children. And they treat them some anyway. There's no more honor no more. You talk to them like they're your child. You have no respect. I see that, man. And I just shake my head at all while you was young and growing up, your parents took care of you. Yeah. Now it's your turn. Do they leave that honor? Do they lose that honor? Do they lose that respect? My mama, in her 90s, I still have to say yes, ma'am. No, yeah. ma'am. Because if I don't, you know what? She'll grab something and try to hit me. <laughs> That's just the way it is. You think I'm going to jump? If I wish I would, then I have three brothers and three more sisters, and they would beat me down. But that's how it was when we was growing up. And that's how it still is to this day. But like I said, you have children that are taking care of their parents, thinking that they don't have to keep the commandments of God. Go ahead and read. But she say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. You better be lucky I'm going to let you live with me. Well, I put you in one of my old folks' home. You understand what I'm saying? Threatening your parents. Knowing that you will take better care of them. Because don't, don't get me wrong, some of these senior citizens, um, they take care of the old people. But there's a lot of them that don't give a darn about the old people. Go ahead and read. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Uh, Thus have ye made the commandment of God of non effect by your tradition. And that's what they do. By your traditions. You done made the commandments of God as non effect, like they don't even exist. Why well, they say with the Sunday, well, our tradition is to go to church on Sunday. But the Sabbath day is the Sabbath day, man. Come on, make it make sense. That's right. I don't care about no traditions. Hey, man, we get, man must live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Lord didn't say go with the tradition, He said go with what I said. Go ahead and read. Ye hypocrites, where did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, uh -huh. this people drop nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips? Jesus, you to death. Just keep saying it all the time like that's going to get them in. Just saying it now. You got works to do. If you believe in Jesus, you're going to do what he say. Go ahead and read. But their heart is far from me. You see that? Their heart. In other words, their mind is hard from me. Far from me. Go ahead and read. But in vain they do worship me. You, in other words, you worship them for nothing. Go ahead and read. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You try to, you try to get in the kingdom of God doing what man say. You got, I got to read this. I want you to do what this, bird, this word say, man. Never mind what I, if I ain't reading from here, disregard. That's what we want you to do. We want you to follow this right here. Like I say it all the time, my words ain't going to profit you nothing. Now that's I'm reading from this right here. Because now it's thus say the Lord. But I'm going to show you what's been going on though. Go to Ezekiel 22. It was going back in the days of the prophets and it's still going on to this day. Ezekiel 22. <coughs> Ezekiel 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Ezekiel 22. Pick it up at 25. Go ahead and read. There's a conspiracy of a prophets in the midst of. And that conspiracy of the prophets is to this day. They all conspire together. All trying to see who they can hood with. Mm. Go ahead and read. 
like a roaring lion ravening the prey. Uh -huh. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. They have devoured souls. Because if I'm not do, giving you the truth, I'm killing you, man. They took the precious thing from the Lord. His treasure. Let me show you who, who this treasure is. Let's go to Malachi, man. Show you who this treasure is, man. You got to understand who his treasure is. Let's go to Malachi, the third chapter. And we're going to pick it up at 16. I just want to show you who this treasure is. And you want to be a part of this treasure. And if you fall under this, you are a part of his treasure. Malachi 3 and 16. Go ahead and read. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another. We're always speaking about God. When the brothers come together, some form, shape, or fashion, we're going to mention the word of God. Speak often of them, man. Sisters and brothers get together, we got to speak the word of God. Go ahead and read. And the Lord hearkened and heard. Are you here? And a book of remembrance was written before. And when you fear God and you talk often about it, a book of remembrance, you know what that book of remembrance is? The book of life. Go ahead and read. And was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his for name. For the one that feared the Lord and always thought upon his name. We're always thinking. When we, if something coming out man to do wrong, we say, uh-uh, I'm scared. And what's going to happen? And they shall be mine, says the Lord you of gonna, hosts. You're going to belong to the Lord. What's he going to do? Go ahead. And that day when I make up my jewels. When I make up my jewels, when I make up my treasure. Go ahead and read. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serveth him. I will spare you. I'm not going to let you see no part of death. But his treasures, those that thought often about him and feared him. Now let's go back to Ezekiel 22. You know, his precious things. You are precious to the Lord. The Lord loved his people, man. Go back to Ezekiel 22. We're going to pick it up at 25 again. Go ahead and read. There's a conspiracy of a prophet in the midst thereof. Yes, it is. Like a roaring lion raving in the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Uh -huh. Her priests have violated my law. And hey, hey, ain't these priests tomorrow are going to violate their law? Who going to teach about the law tomorrow? Who going to teach about the law? That's taboo. You can't mention the law. You get thrown out the church. You come in with that law stuff. Get out of here. We ain't under the law no more. We under grace. I agree with that. But you better find out what law he's talking about. Can't be talking about the Lord more law because that's one of the first things the master came and told him. Think not that I've come to destroy the law, but I've come to fulfill. For verily I say, one joke or one tittle will no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Get around that, man. <laughs> you say you're a New Testament, get around this. He let you know right out the door. Hey, don't think I'm coming to do away with the law, man. You know, as long as there are heaven and earth, man, you got to preach this law. Go ahead and read some more. And that profane my holy thing. Uh -huh. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. They ain't told you what is holy and they ain't told you what is profane. Go ahead and read. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And they definitely ain't going to read that Leviticus 11 chapter and all the things that's involved with clean and unclean. Because certain things you just cannot do. If you unclean, you unclean. You know, you got uncleanness of women and stuff like that. That's why we say hold up. We had to modify it. We just asked the, the person that's unclean not to come into the class. Just like with me. If you got some unclean ladies, just stay out the class, man. That's how it is. We got to teach you. We got to show you the difference. The Lord didn't want this type in the church, man. That's why we say you want to take? Take the tape. We give you a CD. We want you to be obedient to God's word. You understand? Because we can't keep it to the letter. So we had to modify. Let's think if it's a brother got 
three daughters and a wife. And all of them become unclean at, the, at one week after the other. Brother, I ain't going to never get a chance to come to church. You understand what I'm saying? So we had to modify. You understand? And we know why. But the person who's, who, who the uncleanliness is coming from, we say, hey, you just stay back. You understand? And, and that's understandable. You understand what we are just letting the Lord know we acknowledge you, you have a cleanliness law right here. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what it's all about. Teaching the people. Letting them get some understanding. Because like I said, the Lord said, as long as there's a heaven and earth, one jump or one tittle will no pass, will not pass from all till all be fulfilled. And that's how it is. Go ahead and read some more. And I have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. And I am profane among them. See, they hid the eyes from the seven. And he's profane. He's upset. The Lord had him let, let him know, hey man, if you just keep my Sabbath day, you can stay in the land. And you'll have sons and daughters, sons sitting on the throne of David. That's all I want you to do. And they couldn't even do that. Just like today. They can't do it. But you do see now that some of these churches starting to have church on Saturday. Right. So every little bit count. You know what I mean? I'm not speaking against it. Against it. They try. You understand? We, we, we had to learn. Every little bit count. Who knows what they'll do tomorrow? You get to talk to some of these people, you talk about swine. Well, I'm a vegetarian. I don't mess with nothing. But <laughs> well, you're on a good pace. You understand what I'm saying? Every little bit, the Lord started opening our eyes. Remember, we, we wasn't always sealed in this thing. We had to learn. Amen. You can't beat up on them all the time. So I like beating up on the minister because those are the key. <laughs> Which we're going to tell you is show you in the scripture what the Lord say deal with them. Keep reading, brother. And their princes in the midst of are like wolves raving the prey. But, but, but Paul warned you about these wolves. Red and wolves. Go ahead and read. To shed blood uh -huh. and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Because it's always about this money. Dishonest gain. That why, like, we don't have a problem not getting paid. You know, they had brothers that was able to retire from their job. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But the Lord makes sure I get enough to give to my family. My wife would say otherwise because you want to clean everything, man. You know, but hey, it's all right. But I get enough. I get enough. I got a roof over my head. I got food on, on the table. I got clothes on my back. I don't have a problem. You just got to budget what you got. Mm -hmm. There's always food in the house of the Lord. So I got a problem when a brother ain't got enough to eat. I say, well, you know, are you doing what the Lord say do? You understand what I'm saying? You know, because the Lord promised you certain things. He said you're always going to have food in your house. That's why he said, seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things going to be added unto you. And that's the key. Let's seek the kingdom of God. The Lord going to provide you your necessity. Not what you want all the time. Believe me. But sometimes he even do that. Go ahead and read. And their prophets have dobbed them with untempered mortars, uh -huh. seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus say the Lord God, when the Lord have not spoken. You know, they dobbed with this lie. One preacher say one lie, and the other one just add on to it. Saying, Thus say the Lord, and you can't find it. Nowhere in the scriptures where you read it at. Where I've written it at. Nowhere. Go ahead and read. The people of the land have used oppression uh -huh. and exercised robbery. Go ahead. And have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrong. Even the stranger. You go against them. Israel who know the truth. <laughs> They'll tell the Gentile and say, you ain't got nothing to do with this. Why are you, why are you saying that, man? That ain't true. That ain't true. It's too much book to show. Yea, man, the Lord loves righteousness. All those that serve him. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. I ain't got a problem with a Gentile, you know, keeping the commandments. God, I ain't got to worry about you. I'm worried about that brother breaking in my house. <laughs> if I know he's keeping the commandments, I don't have to worry about it. Just like I don't have to worry about a brother when he's keeping the commandments. We can, we can live in harmony. Yeah, man, I'm with you, brother. 
We are all on the same course. Go ahead and read some more. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge uh -huh. and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. See, uh. that's us. We got to stand in the gap. When you hear a lie, you got to say something. Amen. Brother saying something wrong, man, I'll pull him over to the side in a minute. Come here. Let's talk. You said such and such. Can you tell me what this means right here? You understand what I'm saying? It's a way of going about doing it. You know what I'm saying? I will pull a brother to say, 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 well, you said this. And we have to come to some godly conclusion. You don't understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and read some more. Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. You see what the Lord do to these prophets? He pour out his indignation among them. Like that preacher in New York. <laughs> when they came in there and stuck them up with all that gold and everything. <laughs> but you got all that stuff dishonestly. Because I read some things about this guy that he did wrong. Taking people money and everything, yeah, man. Really. That was something. You think the Lord, does, you, you took it secretly, but the Lord showed you openly. Yeah. Go ahead and read some more. I've consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Uh -huh. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, says the Lord He God. recompensed you for your own way. Because of what you did. Come on, look at it again. Let's go to... Titus, the first chapter. Because these guys are out there, man. These guys are out there. They ripping the people off. At least if you go to your class, you know, the Lord say don't muzzle the mouth of feet. You okay, if you're a preacher, you get a small little salary, I ain't got a problem with you. But you gotta be giving them the word of God. If you getting paid, give the people what they need. Feed the sheep. the sheep. This is all about. You gotta exalt God, man. And you exalt God by giving the people what they need. And that is his word to live. That's what it's all about. <laughs> That's simple. Like I said, I want everybody in here to get eternal life, man. And I know the only way you're gonna do it is by abiding in these words right here. And believing in Jesus. Titus 1 and 5. Go ahead and read. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. You know, Paul, Paul set elders up everywhere he went, who had the Spirit of God on them. Go ahead and read. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot and unruly. Because if you're raising your, your kids up in this, this world, they're going to be righteous children. They don't know right. You know, they're children. They ain't going to get everything right all the time, but they're going to hide that seed in their head knowing what's right and what's wrong. Certain things your child just ain't going to do. The other children get to do something, they say, well, not today. Let me go home. Because they're thinking about what daddy and mama said and what they're going to have to deal with. Go ahead and read. For a bishop must be blameless uh -huh. as the steward of God. Go ahead. Not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine or striker, not given to filthy lucre. Not mad all the time. A bro. Every time somebody say something or try to usurp his authority, he want to beat you up. You got preachers out there like that. And then you got 12 people in front. Of them. Can't even ask them a question concerning the scripture. But they always want to get paid. Go ahead and read some more. But I love our hospitality. Be hospitality. Be hospitable. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and read it. A love of good men. Uh -huh. Sober, just, holy, temperate. You know, have some self-control. <coughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like I said, I, you know, I've been sitting under Daniel 30 years, man, and I ain't never seen a brother more humble than him, man. You understand what I'm saying? He's a humble brother. He's a good teacher. And I thank God for bringing that brother in my life. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and read some more. Holding fast the faithful word as he have been taught, uh -huh. that he may be able. But you notice what he said? These elders, they were taught. Everybody got to be taught, man. Go ahead and read some more. Holding fast the faithful word as he have been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine. By sound doctrine. If you're going to deal with somebody with the word of God, make sure it's sound doctrine. Teaching. Right. You can be able to prove it. You gotta be able to prove it. Go ahead and read. 
both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Uh -huh. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. A lot of brothers. Especially <laughs> those of the circumcision. Israel is out there. Go ahead and read. Whose mouth must be stopped. Uh -huh. Who subvert whole houses. You understand subvert whole houses. Destroy Chris. Go ahead and read. To te teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre. And to teach things that they shouldn't do for what? For that money. Go ahead and read. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow belly. You know them false prophets who you see? Slow. You know slow belly. You understand what I'm saying? Evil beast. You understand? Go ahead and read. This witness is true. Wherefore and Paul say it's true too, man. I know they exist. Go ahead and read. Wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Uh, you rebuke them sharply so they may be sound in the faith. Go ahead and read. Not giving heed to Jewish faith uh -huh. and commandments of men that turn from the truth. You know, some people deal with Jewish faith. Still doing custom that the Jews used to do back in the days before Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Jewish fables. You understand? That's thrown away with now. You don't have to do that no more. Jesus came away with doing a lot of that certain dealing with animals you don't deal with no more. You understand? People eating lambs on the Passover. Man, we got Jesus our lamb. First of all, you go eat a lamb, you, that's a certain child you had to hide. He had to be the firstborn. He had to be taken from, from the flock on the 10th day, laid up to the 14th day. No blemish. Nothing could be wrong with it. So how are you eating a Passover lamb? That lamb represented Jesus. He was a shadow of things to come. Those dealing with animals were the sacrificial law. He did away with that. We got books to show you that the prophets even said that was going to happen. That's, there you go. He made the sacrifice better. The blood of bulls and goats couldn't save you. It was Jesus. A body I've got prepared. That's what it's about. He made it better. Go ahead and read. Unto the pure all things are pure. Now unto the pure all things are pure. We know what's right and what's wrong. Go ahead and read. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Ain't nothing pure with them. Just do what you want to do. You serve God your way, I'm going to serve God my way. Nothing pure before them. We'll look at this thing again. You know these brothers come up just raised up saying things they ought not to do. But this was happening in the days of Ezekiel. Yeah. Let's go show you in our uh, Ezekiel the 13th chapter. <clears throat> we go 13 and 1. 13 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh -huh. Said a man, Prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of you know the Lord. You don't want to prophesy out of their own heart. He wants you to hear this word. Go ahead and read. Thus said the Lord God, warn to the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. You know, they're going after their own spirit. And see, you know, that's why you always ask them, show me what you're reading about, man. Show me what you're talking about. Go ahead and read. O oh, Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. You know, they're finding what you can eat. All out there. Go ahead and read. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up. They go to the gaps again. You ain't going up to the gaps to get the people what they need. Go ahead and read. Neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle of the day of the Lord. Because when you go to battle, you got to have this word, man. And if you ain't receiving it right, how you going to go to battle? You're going to lose every trip. Go ahead and read. They have seen vanity and lying div divination, saying, The Lord said, and the Lord have not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. You know, you got these false prophets. Hey, man, he's a servant of the Most High God. And another false prophet. Yeah, that's right. 
He's a servant of the most high God. I'm, I'm one too. You confirming that, God. What makes you a servant of the most high God? Show me. Go ahead and read some more. Have you not seen a vain vision? Uh -huh. And have you not spoken a lying divination where as ye say, the Lord says it, albeit I have not spoken. How many times have you heard ministers say things and the Lord ain't even said it? How many times you done seen that? Go ahead and read. Therefore thus says the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, says the Lord God. Lord said, I'm against you. You lying in my name? I'm against it. It's only a matter of time when the Lord collects. Like I said, you might be getting by, but you ain't getting away. <laughs> when it's time for the Lord to collect, you ain't got enough to put up. Go ahead and read. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lie. You see what the Lord said? He said, my hand going to be against the prophets. They see vanity and divine lies. Go ahead and read. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. You ain't going to make it in, man. Go ahead and read. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. In other words, you ain't going to be in the book of life. You ain't getting in. Go ahead and read. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. And if you're alive when he returns, you ain't getting into the land. I'm going to destroy you. Go look at this thing again. Go to Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. The Lord, he's he going to deal with these prophets that ain't speaking this truth. Jeremiah talked about it too. Go to Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. All the prophets was talking about these false prophets. People not being truthful with the word of God. Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Lord said, Woe be unto these pastors. Go ahead and read. Therefore thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Uh -huh. Ye have scattered my flock. How did they scatter them? Because they're not giving them the word they need. Go ahead and read. And driven them away. You know, if you ain't mentioned in the word of God, sooner or later they're going to walk away from it. Go ahead and read. And have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, says the Lord. In other words, they were doing something evil. They were doing something that wasn't right. That's why people, that why the uh, Lord asked uh, Peter, hey, Peter, you love me? Yeah, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep, man. You got to feed the sheep. Skip on down to verse 16 and read. Thus says the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. Uh -huh. They make you vain. Uh -huh. In other words, they give you things that's good for nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Things that won't even get you across the street. You need the things you, to get salvation, eternal life. Go ahead and read. They speak a vision of their own uh -huh. heart uh -huh. and not out of the mouth of the See, Lord. See, they're telling you things out of their own heart. And I ain't bringing from out of the mouth of the Lord. Go ahead and read. They say still unto them that despise me. Uh -huh. The Lord have said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come you upon you. You can't do what you want to do. You can't serve God your way. You got to serve God the way he says serve him. Go ahead and read. For who have stood in the counsel of the Lord uh -huh. and have perceived and heard his word. Who have marked his word and heard? Uh -huh. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievous upon the head of the wicked. You weakness. see what the Lord said he's going to do to these pastors? A grievous whirlwind. He's going to spin them around so bad. Go ahead and read. The anger of the Lord shall not return uh -huh. until he have executed. You see that? So like I said, you might be getting by, but you ain't getting away. Go ahead and read. Until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it. But in the latter days, you're going to consider this. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and read. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. Uh -huh. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. You can tell if somebody sent, if the Lord sent somebody. All you got to do is listen to what they're saying. That's all you got to do. Just listen to what they are saying. If they saying what thus say the Lord, you're in a good space. But if they're doing their they own little groove, Speaking of the things out of the imagination they don't harm. Hey man, you gotta get I'm glad you to step back from them. Go ahead and read. But if they had stood 
stood in my council. You know, if you stood in the council of the Lord, go ahead and read. And it caused my people to hear my words. Listen to what he said. Caused my people to hear my words. Go ahead and read. Then they should have turned them from their evil That's way. That's what the Lord yeah. going to do. His words going to turn you away from your evil way. That is why people like me get up here. Not only giving it to you, but for them as well. Go ahead and read. And from the evil of their doing. Uh -huh. And my God at hand, says the Lord, and not a God of all. The Lord is always there. He always got his arm out there saying, come on, let's deal with this truth, man. Come on back. Let's go look at this thing again. Let's go see what's going to happen in the latter days. Let's go to Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 34 and 1, go ahead and read. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. You know, prophesy against these, pro these false prophets. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. They always feed themselves. Go ahead and read. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Your thing is to feed the flock. That's why the Lord told me to feed my sheep. Give them the word of God. Go ahead and read. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe ye with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. You get everything they got. You rip them off. You get all the money. Shouldn't you give them what they need, the word of God? Go ahead and read. The disease have ye not strengthened. Uh -huh. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Go ahead. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. And the Lord, you know what does. This is the word of God. He healed the sick. He does all these things by his word. To let them put their hope in the Lord, man. Go ahead and read. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Uh -huh. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have he ruled. And that's how they rule over. You know, they, they, they put that authority. You go check out some of these Sunday churches. Mm -hmm. The authority they have and how they treat some of these parishioners like they nobody. I don't even believe it sometimes. How can you serve a guy like this? You don't sit under a guy like this. First of all, he ain't giving you what you need. He's taking all your money. And then he don't even respect you. How can I, how can I be a preacher and you got to take a number to see me. And sometimes you got to pay him to see him. What kind of brother are you? That don't even make sense to me. Moses had how many people before him? And he, if you count, you know he had so many hundreds of thousands. That was just the depth. You understand what I'm saying? To the point he, he, would, he used to hear everybody. To the Lord said that captains over a thousand and captains over a hundred and captains over ten for smaller matter. But he was doing it all. Go ahead and read some more. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. Uh -huh. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. In other words, they're looking for it, but they can't find it. No, they sit under one person. They ain't good enough for them because they know that anyway. Go over here, it ain't good enough. Go ahead and read. My sheep wandered through all the mountains. And upon every high hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Uh -huh. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. You better listen, you shepherds. Go ahead and read. As I live, said the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves, and fed not my flock. See, there's going to be consequences for this. Skip on down to verse 18 and read. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with their feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. They'll break you, they'll break you down. They'll, take every, they'll make you feel bad. Hey, if you ain't given to the Lord, you ain't going to get blessed. They let you make you feel so bad when you, you know, you have people even giving up their rent. Yeah. Come on, man. Go ahead and read. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet. And they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Now they untook them everything from them. They might give you a little 
Food. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing to eat. Well, we give you a little something. After you done trodden down everything. Took everything from them that uh, they got. You done had pre preachers that took all the people mining and then they asked for a little, little help. The Lord gonna bless you. Don't worry about it. Leave you like that. Go ahead and read. Therefore thus said the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. You don't got fat. But I'm a judge. Go ahead and read. Because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all <laughs> the disease with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. Go ahead and read. Therefore will I save my flock. The Lord gonna save me. The Lord gonna save me. Go ahead and read. And they shall no more be a prey. Uh -huh. And I will judge between cattle and, and cattle. And I'm gonna judge. Go ahead and read. And I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them. Even my servant David. So now we talking about when the Lord returned out. Because when the Lord come, only truth going to come from Zion. That's it. The law going to go forth from Zion. Go ahead and read. He shall feed them. Uh -huh. And he shall be their shepherd. Go ahead. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken. And what else he going to do? And I, will make with the, and I will make with them a covenant of peace. And will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Because when the Lord returns, it's going to be all peace. And everybody going to be keeping the word of God. If you ain't, he's going to kill you. Go ahead and read. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. Uh -huh. And I will cause the shower to come down in this season. Go ahead. There shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield their fruit. Go ahead. And the earth shall yield their increase. And they shall be safe in their land. And that is what the Lord going to do when he bring his people back to their land. Go ahead and read. And shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke. And delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. Now he ain't got to worry about these false prophets no more. Because the Lord is going to deal with them personally. Go ahead and read. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. No heathens. more prey to the heathens. Neither shall the beasts of the land devour them. Go ahead. But they shall dwell safely. Uh -huh. And none shall make them Won't afraid. Don't be afraid no more. But that's coming yet future. You know. Because the Lord him, he himself told you. Amen. In these latter days. These false prophets are going to rise man. Let's go to Matthew the 24th chapter. Go ahead and read that. Matthew 24 and 3. Lord warned you about these false prophets. He warned you. The master himself told you about these latter days. Matthew 24, and we're going to pick it up at 3. Go ahead and read. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And watch what the master tell you here. Go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive First thing you make sure nobody deceive you. Go ahead and read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So expect. It's going to be a lot of deception, people coming in the name of Christ. Skip down 11. He's going to tell you again in case you didn't read that. Go ahead and read. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So there is a lot of deception out here, man. A lot of deception. Excuse me, let's go to our 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. But this ain't nothing new. 2 Corinthians 11. and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous of you with godly jealousy. No, straight up serving of God is jealous over the flock. With a godly jealousy. Don't want nothing to happen to you. Go ahead and read. For I have espoused you to one husband. Here, we going to espouse you to one husband, and that's Jesus. Go ahead and read. That I may present you as a chaste virgin in Christ. Uh -huh. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve to his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Because this thing is simple. It's just keep the commandments of God and believe in Jesus. Nothing else needed. Believe in the one and keep them commandments. Jesus believed in the Father and he kept the commandments. Go ahead and read. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. You know, preaching another Jesus. 
Because what they're going to preach tomorrow is another Jesus. Another Jesus. Right. Just listen to the words they say. Every day is a Sabbath day. I ain't teaching Jesus. You can eat anything you want. That ain't preaching to Jesus. God loves everybody. Yeah, well, you, God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah, he loved the world so that he may become children of God. But at the end of the day, why does he have the lake of fire? Like I said, it's because people are going in there. Would you throw somebody in the fire that you love? Go ahead and read. Whom we have not preached, uh -huh. or if we receive another spirit which he have not received, uh -huh. or another gospel which he have not accepted, he might well bear with Sometimes you just got to put them to the side. Hey, man, you done said this, you done said that. That ain't the gospel of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> But that ain't no thing because Satan came the same way to Eve. Skip on down to verse uh, uh, 13 to read. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Uh -huh. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You know, Satan turned himself into an angel of light. All you got to do is listen to him and see what he's saying. He come in like a, a holy angel, but the things he tell you to do... Ain't got nothing to do with holiness. Go ahead and read. Therefore, there is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You, you know it's always according to their works? Because some of these prophets out here, they out here to do their own thing. And Peter told you about them. Let's go and uh, look at them. Let's go to uh, Peter, the second chapter. Second Peter, the second chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. I'm going to talk about them right here. 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. But there were false prophets also among the people. Go ahead. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who probably shall bring in damnable heresy. You say that damnable heresy. Hearsay. In other words, not true. Go ahead and read. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And when you speak against the Most High, yeah, you got swift destruction coming to you. Go ahead and read. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. And they don't follow them. Just watch the church tomorrow. A lot of people are going to follow their pernicious ways. Go ahead and read. By reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. You know, and, and, and the things that the Lord tell you, I don't have to keep no Sabbath day. I can eat anything I want. The truth is going to be evil spoken of. Go ahead and read. And through covetedness shall they wane fame words, make merchandise. And they're going to say some words. And they don't know what they're going to do. They're going to end up making merchandise of the people. Getting all they might. They're going to make merchandise of them. Go ahead and finish. With fame words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment not of a long time lingers not. And their damnation slumbers. The Lord don't deal with them at a set time. Skip on down to uh, verse 17 and read. These are wells without water. You know, they ain't got no them wells. What, what is a well without water good for? Nothing. Go ahead and read. Clouds that are carried with the tempest, uh -huh. to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Yeah, that's all they got, the, the mist of darkness that's reserved forever. That's what they're going to give you. Go ahead and read. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. You better escape from them. Get away from them. You understand what I'm saying? Because this is what the Lord gave us, man. Let's go to our uh, second Timothy. They got to come with the word of God. Second Timothy. You stick with this word, the Lord got something for you. Three and fifteen. Second Timothy three and fifteen. Pick it up at fourteen. Go ahead and read. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned. No, you this this word is assured. Hey, you believe in it. Go ahead and read. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. You see what he's telling Timothy? From a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. What will they do though, brother? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Which will make you wise unto salvation. That's why I got to read the Holy Scriptures. 
It'll make you wise unto salvation. Go ahead and read. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. You know, I can teach you this word, but I got to teach you to believe in Jesus. Because he's the Savior. And that's the only way you're going to get salvation. Keep reading. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Because these words came from the true and living God, the Father. Go ahead and read. And it's profitable for doctrine. It is proper for teaching. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For reproof and for correction. Go for ahead. instruction in righteousness. Most of all, they are for instruction in righteousness. That's why I have to read the word of God to you. To show you how to walk in righteousness. Not only you have to walk in righteousness, I got to walk in righteousness. Go ahead and read. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see that? That a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished. You understand? Unto what? Good works. And that's what you want. You want your works to be good. Keep reading in the fourth. Go ahead and read. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall judge the quick and dead that is appearing in his kingdom? Go ahead and read. Preach the word. You got to preach this word. Go ahead. Be instant in season. You know, be instant in season. Go ahead and read. Out of season. Because sometimes we deal with the word of God out of season. Out of season. So, you know, when the Passover comes, we got to do it in season. But sometimes we deal with the Passover out of season. Sometimes we deal with the feast in season. And sometimes we, well, all the time in season. But in out of season, we have to deal with it as well. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Reprove. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And other times, in other words, we gotta argue sometimes. You know, because they'll tell you, well, you don't supposed to argue about it. Man, come on. Really? If you're wrong, you're wrong. I gotta set it right. And that's just it. Reprove and reproof and reproof with all long suffering, but what? And doctrine. I gotta correct you with the scriptures. Go ahead and read. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Because in that time is now. Nobody ain't dealing with sound doctrine. Go ahead and read. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fable. And, and, and aren't they doing that now? They believe in fable. The Easter month. Christian. Calling themselves servants of God. But that's what they believe in. Fable. Go ahead and read. But watch thou in all things. But you better watch in all things. Go ahead and read. Endure affliction. And you're going to be afflicted sometimes because of the word of God. Go ahead and read. Do the work of an evangelist. Uh -huh. Make full proof of that. Most ministry. of all, just make full proof of your ministry. Well, however you are serving God, you should be able to prove it. And you can. You should be able to prove whatever you're doing in the name of the Lord. Because if you're doing it in the name of the Lord, it's written. That's simple. Let's go to Amos 8 and pick it up at 11. Got one more after this, and then we'll be it. Amos 8, I'm going to pick it up at 11. So look at this family. 8 and 11. Amos 8 and 11. Go ahead and read. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, uh -huh. that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. You know, a famine from the hearing of the word of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. They're going to run all over. Be looking for an answer from the Lord by his word. He ain't going to be able to find it. Especially when this man of perdition so up. The Antichrist. You definitely ain't going to be able to find it. During that tribulation. Because he's going to say, I'm God. What do you need? What do you need anything? You better listen to me. Go ahead and read. And that day shall their fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. You're going you're gonna to faint for this water. You're going to want this word of God, but you ain't going to be able to find it. You understand what I'm saying? Now let's go to Isaiah 55. We're gonna, this is going to be last. Isaiah 55, pick it up at verse 1. 55 and 1. And this 
word, do not call. Because the way they talk tomorrow, you're going to act like you got to pay for this thing. Then tell you ain't got this stuff is free, man. But they make it seem like you got to, you, as soon as you come in the door, they, they give you an, an envelope for offering. Come on, man. This thing is free. But you know why I know it's free? Because the Lord says it's free. 55 and 1. Go ahead and read. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsty. Come ye to the water. You thirsty? Come to this water. Go ahead and read. And he that have no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. You can buy this, if you don't have no money, come on, buy this wine and this milk without money, without price. And this milk is the word of God. You go to 2 Peter, it tells you that. Go ahead and read. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? Uh -huh. And you and you labor for that which satisfies not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. Because you're going to have some people in, in church tomorrow that labor real hard for the preacher. Going to have the sunrise breakfast. Going to work to the day nails to the bone all the way to sundown. You laboring for nothing. Because all you're doing is serving a man. Go ahead and read. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Uh -huh. Now your soul can delight in fatness. Go ahead and read. Incline your ear and come unto me. He said, listen to me. Incline your ears. Here and your soul shall live. All you got to do is listen and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. You see that? There goes David's name again. He's going to make an everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. And he was telling you, you know, buy, buy, you, buy wine and milk. And like I said earlier, I said second people, the first Peter, the second chapter, talking about this milk is this milk being the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? It's free. He gonna make a covenant with you. Know what? Well, the sure mercy of the day. Go ahead and read. Behold, I've been given him for a witness to the people. He's gonna be a witness to the people. Go ahead and read. A leader and commander to the people. Go ahead. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not. And nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God. You know other nations come by down to you. So you're going to get your status back. Because yep. you done lost that status now. Yes. You the worst of the worst now. <laughs> Nobody cares about you, Israel. But when the Lord returns, he's going to give you all back your glory. You're going to have nations bow down to you. Like they did in the past. Go ahead and read. And for the Holy One of Israel... For he have glorified thee. He gonna glorify you. Go ahead and read. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You better seek the Lord while he may be found. Go ahead and read. Call ye upon him while he is near. Uh -huh. Let the wicked forsake his way. And call upon him while he is near. And let the wicked forsake his ways. Go ahead and read. And the unrighteous man is stopped. Uh -huh. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. So there you go, sisters and brothers. Uh, a famine in the land. I hope somebody <laughs> learned something from this lesson. I thank you. trash away around your seating area and clean off your table. 
and keep questions until after class. Weapons of any kind will not be permitted in the sanctuary. This includes, but is not limited to, limited to guns, knives, etc. We have a, a conference call that if you have any, uh, any questions concerning the word of God, you are invited to our Wednesday night Q&A that starts at 730 on YouTube. Uh, the phone number is posted on our whiteboard uh, with the access code followed by the pound sign. And if you have a Bible and scarf, you are encouraged. Uh, excuse me. Please have your Bible and scarf if you are a lady and any questions you have and your questions will be answered with the scriptures from the Holy Bible. Also, our address is 4574 North 46th Street. And that's also on the whiteboard. Uh, just remember, uh, if you haven't seen anybody in a while, just uh, try to reach out to them. If you have their number. Also, we have a prayer uh, list on the board in the back. And this concludes today's announcements. And always continue to pray for one another. Okay. That's it. Okay. We just got out the faith to move and we close up.